Hi there, my fellow intellectuals. Today we're going to be deriving Newton's second law in polar coordinates. So hopefully we all remember that Newton's law says that f is equal to mass times acceleration, which is always just equal to mass times the second derivative of the position vector. Now the two dots on the top of that r on, on top of that r vector is uh, saying we want to take the time derivative. So this is the shorthand notation of writing the time derivative of the position vector. So remember in Cartesian coordinates that we have these transformations. We have x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine of theta. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to write the position vector. Okay, so the position vector is just x x hat plus y y hat. Sometimes you might see x hat as i hat and y hat as j hat, but I'll just write them as x hat and y hat for now. So if we use that transformation right above, we can rewrite the r vector as r cosine theta x hat plus r sine theta y hat. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find what the r hat vector is. That is the vector that is of unit length. Sorry, that's the that's r vector. I should write this as r hat. The unit vector in the direction of r. So this big arrow is r vector. The r hat vector is just a vector in that direction with unit length. So hopefully that sounds familiar from your intro physics classes. And if you want to get the um, unit vector, you just take the normal vector and you divide it by its magnitude. But in this case, the magnitude of this, essentially this right triangle here, is just r, right? Because we have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. That's the, that's the, um, the hypotenuse of this right, right triangle up there. So uh, the, the length of that is just, is just r, right? So we're going to divide our r vector by r. So we'll have r cosine theta x hat, r sine theta y hat, divide that by r. And now you can see that all the r's cancel. And you're just left with r hat is equal to cosine theta x hat plus sine theta of y hat. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new vector. It's going to be the theta hat vector. And the theta hat vector is just a vector that points, it's a unit vector that points in the direction of theta, or of the theta direction, right? And it's always going to be at a right angle to the r hat vector because they are uh, they're orthogonal vectors to each other. And so what I can do is that I can actually draw the r hat, uh, the theta hat vector, sorry, at the origin, like this. Here's theta hat. And we can use some trigonometry to figure out what it has to be, okay? So um, remember that this is the angle theta, so this angle up here has to be 90 minus theta. And that's 90 minus theta, this has to be theta right here, because this is a right angle between r hat and theta hat. Okay, so let's try and break down what theta hat has to be. So we draw the theta hat triangle. I'm going to try and draw it a little bit more clearly. So here is the theta hat. So here's theta hat. The magnitude of that, that's just one because it's uh, it's a unit vector. This is a right angle. This is theta. And if we think about this, this top part is going to be in the x direction, right? So the, the x component of theta hat is, um, well, it's, it might be a little bit hard to see, but hopefully we can see that it's going to be equal to the, um, the sine of theta, right? And I said it was hard to see be just because I was looking in the wrong, I was looking at this, I was looking at this side right here, not actual, not at the actual drawing. I was doing. And y is equal to 
co uh, cosine of theta. So with those two pieces of information, we can write theta hat as equal to, um, well, first off, we have to consider the, the direction, right? So remember, the x component is actually pointing in the negative x direction, right? So if we drew that component up here, this is pointing in the negative x direction. And so we should write the x component with a negative sign. So this is going to be negative sine theta x hat plus cosine of theta y hat. Okay? And so those are our two unit vectors in polar coordinates. And now that we have that, we are ready to start taking some derivatives and try and piece together the mess that will unfold. So let's go ahead and just take the second derivative of our, uh, of our vector. So we take our double dot, that's just taking two derivatives of time with respect to r. Sorry, there should be just there should be no r vector. No 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 double dots, sorry. It should just be this. So let's just look at the first derivative, right? So the first derivative of r is equal to d by dt of r cosine of theta x hat plus r sine theta of y hat. And now here's the key thing r and theta can change with time. Can change with time. So that means we have to be careful. We have to use the chain rule when we take these derivatives. So for example, let's take the first derivative of this term, r cosine theta. So the first uh, thing we have to take the derivative of is r. So if you remember, uh, if you just have something that looks like two functions, f of g, this just gives you f prime times g plus uh, f g prime. In this case, our this is this r is our this r is our f and this cosine theta is our g. So if we use the pow, uh, the the product rule here, we'll have the following results. So we'll have uh, we'll have r dot uh, cosine of theta plus r. Now taking the derivative of cosine is a negative sine theta, but then using the chain rule, theta can change with time, so we have a theta dot. And this is still in the x hat direction. And now we'll have plus, um, again, we have to use the product rule again, so we'll have r dot sine theta, remember we're working on this term now, uh, plus r cosine theta theta dot y hat. Okay, so we've got um, these terms here. Let's just try and combine the stuff that we can actually combine. So I'm going to um, write the following down. So let's just go, we'll have r dot cosine of theta. So I'm just factoring out a, um, I'm factoring out an r dot from these two terms. I'll have r dot cosine theta x hat, which is this term right here. Now, on the other side, from the y hat side, we have that r dot sine theta. So I'll have plus sine theta y hat. And if you remember what this is, remember that that is just r hat, right? Cosine theta x hat plus sine theta y hat. So this is just r hat. And then on the other term, if we have a plus a theta dot, we'll have theta dot, and there's also an r theta dot. So let's have r theta dot on the outside. We'll have uh, negative sine of theta x hat plus cosine of theta y hat. And if we look above, that is just theta hat right there. So it was worth the trouble of getting those unit vectors. So the first derivative of r is equal to r dot r hat plus r theta dot theta hat. Okay, so that is the uh, first derivative of r vector. 
and we still need to get the second derivative of our vector to, to get Newton's second law. So let's just think about this. This is the, the radial component. This is just saying you know, how fast is the velocity changing with time in the radial direction. And this is you know, how fast is the velocity changing in the angular direction. And so I think since the derivation will go on for a bit longer, I will end this part now and I will come back and do the second derivative uh, for a part two. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was uh, useful in thinking about these unit, new unit vectors and I will see you in the next part.